<clears throat> this your boy Big Block, homie, the East Side Chevy Rider. Represent Block Entertainment. Represent Bad Boy South. Represent Noon Time. MMG. Allhiphop.com. Grouchy Greg. Big Chuck. I like it out. TDE. CWA, baby. Zone 6. How a bit. What's going on, everybody? It's your man Chuck Creekmer, a.k.a. Jigsaw, here at One World Studios. We are here with none other than a legend, a pioneer. You, are you a pioneer? Absolutely. A pioneer. Trailblazer. Trailblazer. And, a, and a, almost an unsung hero in hip-hop. Yeah. Big block. What's block up, entertainment. Man? How you doing, Chuck? Man, I'm good, man. Yeah. I'm glad, glad you're here, man. I've been trying to get you in the studio for a minute. Man, appreciate it. Been a minute. here now. Yeah, yeah. We're Thank you now. for pulling up. Yeah. Yeah, so first things first, man, you know, I want to, before we go down memory lane and everything, yep. talk to me a little bit about what you up to right now. Um, it's my new campaign. It's called Rebuilding Hip Hop Block by Block. Okay. And basically what I want to do, I want to visit untapped markets. Okay. So I can help, you know, kind of spread, you know what I'm saying, like, like bring on hip hop a little bit more. You know what I'm saying, different type of flavor, different type of sauce. You know, like, like start going to different places instead of Atlanta, instead of New York, instead mm -hmm. of... You know, that Chicago shit like that, you know. Yeah. Just want to span it out. Okay, you know that's what's up. Yeah. You working with artists? What, what, so what's the... Yeah. yeah, basically what I'm doing, I'm trying to empower, like, new execs. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to partner with them. Like, my first one is, 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 is Hugh Neal and uh, Stone Road, you know, uh, Stone Road Records. Okay. And then with this artist, J-Lock, okay. doing that. You know, J-Lock out, out, um, out of Mississippi. Okay. You know, just, just different areas from there. That's what's yeah. up. That's what's up. So... You know, people, you you like one of the, you one of the few executives that um kind of stayed yeah. an executive. Like, yeah. a lot of um executives turn into artists. Yeah. And you become, like, in front of the camera more than even the artists. Yeah. Um, first of all, tell people a little bit about yourself and how you came to this place today. Well, you know, I, um, you know, like, initially, man, I was, you know, like, I did a bid. Mm -hmm. And I, um, because I was raised in Atlanta. You know, back and forth to L.A. Watts. Yeah. And um, and, and I've always had an idea and a concept to do a rap group called Boys in the Hood. Yeah. And uh, and that's all I want to do. I want to get out. You know what I'm saying? I get into the hustle and then do that group and I was just going to retire. Okay. But uh, but coming through, um, you know, like through the music business, through Tupac and Outlaws, mm -hmm. to run a Suave House, mm -hmm. and run a um, Noon Time, you know what I'm saying, which was a big production company. Yeah. And then create Show Enough Records with me and Jazz and Faith, mm -hmm. which we found in Sierra. Joe the Breeze, and I ain't no sign of Jeezy, you know what I'm saying, with Boys in the Hood, mm -hmm. and then Jody, um, Jody, um, Big Gee, mm -hmm. Big, uh, Big Duke, you know what I'm saying, with Boys in the Hood, and um, and Jock Crease, mm -hmm. uh, Gorilla Zoe, Young Jock. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's just, you know, it's just a little, too, right? Well, people say that, but, but I never really, really signed, you know, you know, just a little affiliation. Yeah, you know, I ain't gonna take the credit for that. Okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. So uh yeah, but you know, you know, just be on the ground like that. Yeah. You yeah. know. Um it, it it makes sense now. Cause cause when Boys in the Hood came out, I was like, Boys in the Hood, it's yeah. like Atlanta. Yeah. Why why are they calling themselves that? Like it didn't yeah. make sense at the time, but Yeah, you're my pops from Watts. Okay. So I, you know, since I went back and forth. Yeah. So I got that coach in me too. You know what I'm saying? Now, how, how how did that go? Because, you know, at that time, you know, to give people perspective, you know, Jeezy was probably the hottest in the street, so to speak. I yeah. mean, as far as we were concerned, you know, from the outside. And um, and then he's also got this situation with kind of like with Def Jam and yeah. Diddy. Diddy's in the mix at that time. And that deal was with Bad Boy yeah. and uh, what, Epic? Uh, Bad Boy and, um, and Atlantic. Atlantic, Atlantic. Yeah. Um, yeah, but the first one, you know, like the first album was with Atlantic and Warm. I mean, uh, Bad Boy and um, and Universal. And Universal. And okay. then, and then right in the middle, we switched to Atlantic. Okay. And so Leo came over and kind of, you know, brought us over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But how did, how did you get Jeezy to even do this project? Well, you know, I managed Jazz and Faith. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, Noonan had the... The record being the side had the street side. Yeah. So every time Jazz produced a record with the streets, they called me. Mm -hmm. So Meech called me and said, "Hey, I got an artist that want Jazz, you know, Jazz face to produce." Yeah. So he pulled up. I was working on Boys in the Hood. Yeah. And at that time, me and Trick Daddy was doing it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Trick Daddy initially was one of the guys that I partnered with to do Boys in the Hood. Right. 
Because at first it's going to be like a super group. It's going to be Trick Daddy, Sean Paul from the Young Bloods, T.I., and Jody. But I was like, you know, that's a super group. You know what I'm saying? People, you know what I'm People, you know, people gonna come back and say, oh, man, anybody could have done that. So I say, you know, let's do some some raw cats. Yeah. So so when Jesus pulled up, and I asked him then, you know, uh, you know, like did he want to be part of the group? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it went for now. You know what I'm saying? Because at that time, a lot of people weren't dealing with like the real street music in Atlanta. Like radio wasn't playing nobody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All that. So I was there with Puff, and that's how that went. How'd you get down with Puff? Because that was a, uh, you know, kind of odd too. You know, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, for me at least. Well, well, you know, like, you know, coming through the whole uh, uh, parking outlaw situation. Mm-hmm. Cause I was family with with, with, with parking. I was family. We gonna get there. We gonna yeah. get there. And um, but you know, cause a lot of people they like to ride the name and drop the name. But yeah, I mean, I was just strictly family with yeah. parking. I was just a person that was just there, and I did what I had to do. Yeah. But um, but 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 Kim Porter, she like I met Kim. And um and Kim, you know, Kim used to come around and um and Kim heard the songs and she and she gave it a puff. Uh, and then okay. Puff was like, Man, let's go. But I mean, but I mean but Dr. Dre was on it. And um and and I was gonna take it to Dre at first, but but um uh, but Puff didn't have nothing and I just felt like that's better for me. Yeah. 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 I like how you casually throwing names out there like yeah. Dr. Dre. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. Just the truth. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Um, so, boys in the hood event it kind of fizzled quick. What, why, why did that happen? Is it because Jeezy left, or is it because? Well, well, see, see, a lot of people think Jeezy left. Okay, Jeezy didn't leave. It was like, you know, when I did the deal, it's supposed to be like Menudo, mm. like circle, like, like, like when one make it, and then I bring another in, mm-hmm. and then then the person that make it can come back. And to help the next dude I bring in, that's mm-hmm. what happened. She's she's on the side for, for two deals, okay. two albums. Right. Supposed to be the first album, and then the album at the end of. If I do ten albums, and then you know, saying everybody come back and do the album. Right. So Jesus was on the side really for one album. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so he didn't leave. But what happened? Him and Joe the Breeze, you know, they just didn't they didn't mm-hmm. get along. Okay, gotcha. You know? Yeah, gotcha. I mean, like I wish now I just would have told both of them just just go do a one in the back and just yeah. get this shit over with. Right. You're fucking up my money. Right. But you know, uh, you know, Jody Breeze was like a star at that time too. Man, man, like, Jody's he, still a star. Hey, yeah. man, you know, I got Jody too now. Yeah, said, we'll be back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I liked him a lot. I yeah, liked Jody him a lot. man. Yeah. So talk about you know your your relationship with the Shakur family and Tupac and yeah. and things like that because that's something I really didn't know at first. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's how I got in the music business. I mean, mm-hmm. I was, you know, you know, you know, I was introduced to Pop through his sister. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, like I had a great relationship with his sister, and then I was just, you know, just around, and I was just blessed enough to be around the family. Yeah, to you know, saying to see things, and you know, saying you know, saying like like go in the studio and just see things mm-hmm. and kind of learn the business. Yeah, just from, you know, what I'm saying just you know, you know, what I'm saying just just sit aside. Yeah, and then I ended up meeting uh, Tony Draper. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, I love the Greg Street. Cause Greg Street is, you know, yeah, shout you know, Draper. Greg Street, yeah. And then Draper put me in position. And that's when I signed Ross. I took Rick Ross over there to Draper. And you then had once, the Jersey Ross with, with the jerseys yeah, on it. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 you know, I had Ross when he was Teflon done. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so okay. then, um, so with, I mean, so when Draper walked away from the game, then me and Greg Street took him to Ted, you know, um, mm-hmm. down the slide. Yeah. And then Ted took him to Jay. So. Got you. Yeah, well, that shit took us about 10 years. Yeah. From 96 to 05, 06. Yeah, people don't know that. that yeah, but well, this shit take time, time, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, Did you learn anything from Tupac? Did he? Man, learn. You know what I learned, man? You know, stay in the studio and work, man. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, study yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, everything's spiritual, man. Right. Yeah, you know. That's what I basically learned. Yeah. Hard work. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, people don't really understand, like, um, the time period, you know. Mm. At that time, you know, it, it was, well, not Tupac, t- the Tupac era, but, the, you know, the Jeezy, yeah. the Big Meech, yeah. the, um, you know, the Atlanta scene. It was mm. hot. I was yeah. not all the way in because I wasn't living there or anything. Yeah. But when I did go, it was always, it felt hot. Yeah. All the time, and I don't mean nah, you know you what I mean. Buzz, I mean like yeah, yeah, yeah like into the money. Yeah. It was, it, 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 um, ATL was a vibe, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The, the Freaknik, man. The land of Freaknik. <laughs> yeah. The land of uh, wait. When, when was Freaknik at his peak? What year was it at his peak? I say to me, man. I say I think 95. 95. 96. Right. 
Right. 95, 96. You know what I'm saying? The Olympics came in 96. I said about 95. 95. You know what I'm saying? You know, Jack the Rapper was like, what, 90, 94, 95? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah 95. Definitely. See, they don't know about Jack the Rapper. They don't know no. about him. You know what I'm saying? Jack the Rapper. He passed yeah. away, rest in yeah. peace, but he was very influential. Yeah. yeah. yeah he brought a lot of things to the city. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, you know, what? You know, in terms of your place in the history, where yeah. would you where would you say you know where do you stand, you know, in the history of hip hop? Period. You know, this is fifty years of hip hop. Man, um, honestly, man, if I if I put myself in a category or put myself in a place, I say um, the place where I can well. What, what I say? I think I thought I think what I help bring what I help bring to the to hip hop is trying to empower young niggas from the hood. Mm-hmm. They can feed themselves mm-hmm. and and make this out of a, a living. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, that's what I wanted to do because mm-hmm. I come from that world where you had to hustle to eat, and I just want to do it the right way because I'm into it about some great people. Yeah. So you know, I, I mean, my, my my play wasn't always try to be the next uh, Nino Brown. My play was to get out mm-hmm. and try to help empower others. So specifically, who were your mentors? Oh, number one, Jose Williams. You know, he was he he was a uh, Martin Luther King right hand man. Okay. He was a mm-hmm. rebel right. of, of, the, of the civil rights movement. Okay, you know what I'm saying? He was a rebel, and then uh, the Khalid Muhammad. Oh wow! You know that's okay. my guy. When he moved to Atlanta. Okay. He can, hey, so I was with him down there every other week. Okay. Okay. okay rest in peace, him. I'm re- I'm literally I'm reading this book up. right now. Yeah. 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 Man, yeah. 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 I'm yeah. literally reading. Yeah, that's my guy. Yeah, Farai is my dude. Mm-hmm. So we just talked uh, uh, at the BET Awards. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm reading this book. I've been reading it for a while. It's a bit. It's a. It's yeah. a big book, and it's a great book too. So, Crazy. Um, I mean, my wait guy a minute. Hashim, my, my guy Hashim was his right hand man. Okay. And he passed too about a year ago. Okay. And I met him. He um he said block him holler at me. He said yeah, I'm dying. He said hey. He said man Khalid when he died, he left a big um a big suitcase. And I, and I want you to have it because he really, he really thought you was a brother there. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying? a real strong brother. He respected you. You know, Khalid don't respect nobody. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, man. Yeah. So I gotta get that man. Unapologetically black. Nah, man, well, nah, actually, man. you know what? Do this for me. Tell people who Dr. Khalid Muhammad was, so they know. Because like a lot of people do not yeah. know. Khal- well, f- for the hip hop world, Khalid was any Muslim you heard on any record. Ice Cube, Tupac, Ice, Ice Cube, Cube yeah. Public Enemy, Public Enemy, probably, probably one of the most famous. Ones. But yeah, he was, you know, what I'm he was a Muslim that 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 really crossed over because he from Houston, I think. I mm-hmm. think he from Houston, and then he came up in uh, uh he beat the streets of L.A. Mm-hmm. and then up here in Harlem, mm-hmm. I think, and then he moved to Atlanta. Yeah, like. Like around the time, pop band. Yeah, yeah. So him and pop was real cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, when you guy. talk about, it's hard to it's, when you talk about militant. He he's yeah. right next to it. It's funny to hear that that's your mentors, though. I thought you was gonna say somebody from the music industry. No, but not at all. <laughs> no. Yeah. Nobody <laughs> mentored me. In that. I learned. Well, I learned from the mud, man. I got out the mud. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really, cause I mean, cause but you gotta think, man. I got a music in nineteen ninety four. Mm-hmm. That's 27, what? Shit, man, that's what years ago, man. That's almost 30. That's 30 years ago. Yeah. You know, like, like, when I got in, I wasn't trying to be in the music band. It's just, yeah. you know, it just came on me. You know, maybe I'm favorite, and yeah. this is what somebody's supposed to be doing. Because I do it easy. I mean, the relationship game, and I learn it easy, so I, yeah. I, I may be favorite. Right, Thank right. God for that. But, yeah, I mean, I wasn't really too much trying to be in the music band like that. Now, I can not say a guy that taught me a lot was Hard Pierre. Well, Tony Draper, number mm-hmm. one, Greg Street. Harp here, taught Harpia, me a lot. Bad Boy Records. Oh, yeah, that's my brother. Yeah, shout out to him. I mean, like, he told me, like, you know, when I first got into the music business, I didn't like the way they did things. Mm-hmm. And, and they don't mean I'm going to keep doing it. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, so Harp was just taught me how to turn shit down and turn up when I need to. Yeah. Okay. You know, kind of like what Kobe said, you know, like, take shit out on, take shit out on these niggas on the court. Mm-hmm. That's what I did. Yeah. When yeah. you see, you know, you see artists like, you know, I mean, you know, I don't want to name check people, but they end up going really high in the, you know, like in the, in the, 
in the stars, so to speak. You know what I mean? They beca- no. they blow up. They no. blow up, blow up. I don't no. mean like, you know what I'm saying? So you're a kingmaker in that regard. But but sometimes you don't feel or see, rather, that they refer to you or, you know what I mean, give credit mm-hmm. to where they came from. I'm not saying anyone in particular. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying anyone in particular. No. no I think it's what writes you out of history books if you love them. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel you said niggas we'll write you out the history books if you love them. Yeah. Like I hear a lot of st- I mean, like I hear people <laughs> I don't care. I see it, I hear a lot of people when they come up, the story be arranged a little bit different. Uh-huh. You know, like I hear, you know, I mean I mean, I hear Jesus story. You know, y'all had him up here. You know, it wasn't for me, Jesus when it wasn't for me, I'm gonna say it right up and down. Jesus would be, Jesus wouldn't got started the way he got started. Mm. How so? Because I mean, it's, it's evident he had to have him out before, and um, and just you know, just you know, God placed things in order, and uh, and uh, and honestly, it don't take but two minutes to give people they they just do. Mm-hmm. It don't take that long. To say, hey man, this is how I did it. You know what I'm saying? When Ross, if, if you ever talk to Ross, you take trip it down. Blocking Dread Street most definitely was a piece of the puzzle. Yeah. I got to do get people they just do. Yeah. When I hear Jesus talk, he say, you know, Puff did it. Puff didn't even know him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, but I ain't tripping. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> we ain't going to go too far with that. Yeah. But did you um, have a relationship with Meech? I know. It, it, yeah. And, and like I said, how was that? Yeah. I mean. Because that, that's a, that was. But, but you know, you got, but you got to think, Meech, man, man, Meech was in Atlanta. Man, way before BML. I mean, as in the movement. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Before like, that song went East. up. Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Way back, <laughs> 10 years before the song went up. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we were partners, man. It was cool. You know, got to think, man, just doing this movement. Because you got to think, when BML, that's who helped me break boys in the hood. Okay. Because they wouldn't even play. I mean, they wouldn't even throw money unless the boy was on. That was their song. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know? You know, one love the Foxy. Oh, you said they wouldn't throw money up in the club? <laughs> when, uh, wow. No. Wow, you know, y'all need what y'all need to do, man. Call it Foxy, man. Foxy, I get her number. She was no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. She was like the she was a girl in in, in the BMF movement, okay, dancers, but she was in the streets, like, okay, you know. Yeah, we definitely. I'm gonna tell you. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah, me and me had a relationship. We cool. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. Um, what do you think about you know? There's a lot of hip hop representations going on. Um, you know, you got the BMF show, you got Wu Tang shows, yeah. you, you know what I mean? You got all these different um versions of what's going on. Yeah. What are you thinking about with you and your legacy and moving forward and things? I mean like I wanna do a show on what I'm doing like now. Like like I actually wanna like like on this rebuild hip hop block by block, I actually wanna show me going into the cities and and, 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 and sit down with the artists. Mm-hmm. You know, sit down with a high school Girlfriends, mm-hmm. boyfriends, or you know, like like going to their barber shops, like really get inside their life and 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 get in tune with them. That's what yeah. I want to show. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So the, I mean, so the people can really get to know the artists, yeah. and I think that'll help springboard artists as well, because people really want to know what they get themselves in, into sometimes yeah. when it comes to artists. Right. You know, so right now, man, you know we, you know we get behind these artists that don't know their snitching, they don't know they this and that, mm-hmm. and then we find out like, damn. But I think if you know a little bit more about them yeah. and go inside of the, you know, say their house, you know, say you'll see what kind of person they are. It's it's harder to find that out because now you see most of it through like social media, yeah. right? Yeah, that social media shit, can, man. You paint the picture how you want it with that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, in terms of the day of you know right now, what what is uh, you know, what do you think about artists now, like in general, what the uh, you know, what it looks like. Cause with hip hop being fifty, you know, we're mm. already looking at the next fifty. We're yeah. like, yeah, okay, what do we, what do we got to do to maintain this and do better, even? You know, like I always come to a roadblock with that, cause it's like, and maybe cause they say, you know, we old Chuck, but <laughs> it's like, I like substance. I like, like Ice Cube, my favorite rapper. Okay, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, I like stories. I like the way you can, you can see the scenes. And the, I like that. Yeah, but. But women, they love the way the beat. You know, they love beats. Mm-hmm. Then they buy to, I guess after we put them up there, then they buy to that character. Yeah. But I mean, but I'm a I'm a real executive. I like to 
like I like good music. Yeah, yeah. good music just ain't the beats to me. Mm-hmm. It's like you know, it's just like you know, a good lyrics, and shit like that. But the young world, but I guess that's what I guess my mom because my mom used to tell me to turn that shit off too when I was <laughs> when I was young. Man, turn that noise off. I know she had to tell yeah. you turn Ice Cube off if, yeah. she, if he was blasting yeah. that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so you know, but but. But now the music just, just I mean, I think if young guys come out, young artists come out with concepts and good music, I think it'll get better. I just think mm-hmm. that just going in now, the, the freestyle shit, sometimes it works, sometimes it's, it's a lot of noise. I was talking to somebody from a major label, yeah. um, and he casually just said, you know, it's it's basically B- BS over music now. Yeah, of course. He literally said, t- and he and he don't agree with it, but whoever he works for, that's what they're saying. You know, See, that's he what need, they tell. Yeah, but he need to quit because uh-huh. he's stepping that shit. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? Uh-huh. I mean, that's why, you know, a lot of labels want me to come be their head of that. Man, I, I just can't, I can't sign nothing or I can't partner with something that I can't, that I don't believe in. Yeah, right. And, yeah. you know, and now, man, they doing the analytics shit. Yeah. They doing a lot of stuff. I just, I, I'm not signing shit because I do that. And yeah. we put enough money behind whatever we got, it'll work in a way. Yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Yeah. Um, looking forward to, you know, with Block Entertainment, <sighs> talk about your um roster now, like who you got and what you're doing. Yeah, you know, um, you know, like I say right now, what I'm trying to do, well, what I'm doing is, like, I want, want to focus more on the executive side. Okay. And I want to spring more on the face side. How does, that, how does that work for you, though? Like, how, like, oh, oh, is that your team or is that? Well, um, no, that's partnership. Like, if I partner with a guy, and I see, cause you got to think, man, a lot of people, they they kind of run out of gas because they don't have the source. I mean, this is the resources. Yeah. And then by the time they figure that figure that shit out, mm-hmm. then they ain't got the bread they used to have. Right. And then they, you know, yeah. they frustrated. You know, but they really had some artists. They, they had lose a team. the artists by you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, yeah. right. So that's what I want to do, man, because I come from that world. So that you know, makes sense. I can relate to them. Yeah. So that's what I want to do with Block NT now. You know, I can just start a consulting company called Status, mm-hmm. and I can just bring board of careers like that, and then I can help. Then I can manage their artists. Are there, are, can, are, there are there executives out there though? Uh, yeah, like, 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 like I get the impression everybody wants to rap. Nah, nah, but my boy he was stole the road. He don't want to do shit with us. Sit back, man. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And and go hard for his artists. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's what I do most definitely. I'm going 100 for because I see he, I mean, he going to do it with you, not me. You know what I'm saying? That kind of partnerships I want. I want to, you know what I'm saying, you know, be able to partner with somebody that's going to do it with or without me. Right. It's just they time is going to come around. How come there aren't more moguls in hip-hop? Like rap, like like when I say moguls, you know, I, I live. I'm thinking that time, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. I think because um, a lot of us, okay, a lot of us, when we get into the music business, we don't get it. A lot of people don't get it. And this is what I t- tell a lot of people now. Everything that you learned before you got to this point, delete it. Because mm. that's going to get your ass blackballed or go the other mm. way. They're going to yeah. run from you. The people that can put you in power, they're going to run from you. Yeah. Mm. You know, Leo, when I first met Leo, he said, Block, I watched you for about a year. And Leo came and lived in my house. I mean, and he was like, what I know about you is you keep your hands dirty, meaning you front line with your artists. You don't mind by getting, you don't mind by, you know, taking your artist bad to the fucking plane. You don't mind by doing this shit that, you know what I'm saying, niggas that, you know, think they too big for. Mm-hmm. So I like to stay like that. Yeah. You know. But what that's the Muslim it, what, side of me. What it, Humbleness. You Muslim? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, you, oh, that's, in, that's interesting. So what was Leo trying to say? Like, is that a good No, thing? no, no, no. That was a great, I mean. I took it as a compliment because that's what I was doing. Yeah. So I used to go on the label. They used to call me Baby Sugar because I wouldn't take shit from them. Right. And I used to go on the label and I fight for my artists. I wouldn't fight for no no money because I wouldn't go buy a car. Mm-hmm. You no, know, mm-hmm. I'll fight for hire more people and put on my team. Yeah. So my artists can have a chance to get what they deserve because they're out here working, they're out here sacrificing, being away from their families. Yeah, yeah I got to come up. Yeah. So that's what he liked about it. You you had you had you, you know you talk uh, you talk all these names. You haven't ever felt like yo I want to be a part of this like uh, a, a part of this the system. No, no, no. Yeah. That you know you know a lot of people man. 
they say block your time because the niggas in the the niggas they put in the place now or the people they got in place now, they just taking their shit. They stealing. Mm. You know, they just they just doing their job. Mm. I'm gonna go way beyond. Yeah. That's just me in a way. Yeah. I'm gonna go way beyond what I'm what y'all set for me to do. Yeah. yeah. So if I get in the buildings, I most definitely I mean most definitely gotta have my own corner. Mm-hmm. I only want y'all to come down here. Right. <laughs> I'm going to be on my own shit. Right, You right. know. But big shout out, shout out to Munchie, man. Munchie, Daniel Price over there, man. We we talking some big shit over there. Where at? You know, at, uh, at Republic. Okay. We doing some big things at Republic. Doing a big thing with Atlantic. Yeah. It's a big thing with Kevin. You know what I'm saying? Salim. I'm doing some things. Naeem Ali, what's up, man? Tom Wally. I'm going to some big character. So you ain't blackballed or nothing them. like that. I'm far from blackball. Far from blackball. They need me anyway. Yeah. They need me. I never be blackballed. Yeah. I'm too smart for that. Right. You know. Yeah. Um. You recently got an award or. Yeah, yeah I got. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, I got my. my you know, what I'm saying my day in the city. You know, what I'm saying. You know, um, one love to Antonio Lewis down there. Mm-hmm. You know, he gave me a day in the city for being a trailblazer in the city. Mm-hmm. Cause it wasn't it, it wasn't a block in the city before me, you know what I'm saying? Before me, you had I mean some niggas that really won from that. You had L.A. Reid, you had Babyface, and uh, when he had J.D., you know J.D. my brother, whatever he had organized noise, yeah, you know. But when I came, I was just really just J.D. Right, right. Yeah, and and I, and, and 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 I took it from the streets up to now. Right. Yeah. You know, I was talking to Willie D from the Ghetto Boys the other day. Yeah. And um, he was talking about Hip Hop 50. He wasn't too pleased with it. And he basically was like, you know, we're not celebrating all of Hip Hop 50. We're celebrating a piece of it. No. And um, and he was basically saying that, you know, if it wasn't for the South and the West Coast, no. it might not have made it to 50. It might have stopped somewhere in the, See, in the, in the 90s. What, what do you think about that? I, I agree. agree. I totally agree. Because yeah. remember, I would tell you, about that's what that's why I want to go and do the untapped markets, mm-hmm. so it can continue to grow. Yeah. So he, I mean, he won't definitely on it because if we would have stopped it just in New York, no disrespect, how far would we get? I mean, we've been this, no, this is like seeing that, no, it's just like eating the same meal every day. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So you want yeah. different flavors. So I mean, so I agree with him. Yeah. But you know, hip hop fits the man. Like I'm seeing, you know, like a lot of people they pay to play. Yeah. And um, you know, some people get awards. I'm seeing people getting awards for this and that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What you what you get awards for? Right. Well, you broke. Right. You still got this. Listen, nobody. And I said this loud and proud. None of y'all head ons or whoever should ever get a fucking award if you sit on your artist and you can't break your artist. Yeah. You're not then to have an award, my right. nigga. Like, right. you know, I mean, you bet by being out of company and you can't jump your artist off. Right. Any artist I ever touch, they then break. So I don't really respect that fake ass shit. Yeah, no, I feel you. All right, Block, so here's what we're going to do. I need your top five, dead or alive. Don't, you you, you can't flake on me, man. Come on, yo. You got to do it. You got to do it. I know it's going to be hard. I know it's going to be hard, especially for you. Bro. All right. Ice Cube, my first one. Okay, boom. Fair enough. Tupac. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Uh, I got to put LL in a LL. somewhere. That's, that's fine. Uh, oh, We're going to have a, a lot of fun with the edit on this one. <laughs> All right. It's going to be Ice Cube, Tupac, LL, Big G from Boys in the Hood. Okay. Okay. Oh, man. I got to put Ross. Look, I'm. I, yeah, Ross, he don't get mentioned enough. I got to put Ross. That nigga beat. That nigga beat. Talk about Ross a little bit. Why? Wow, what, what made you put him in there? Well, you know, like we had, you know, me and Ross. We had, you know, like I met Ross through a friend of both of ours, and he told me how Ross, how good Ross was. Yeah. And man, and 
you know, right off the bat, man, we you know, we became brothers. Yeah. You know, he stayed with me off and on for five years. Uh-huh. You know, I've been solid, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and and, 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 and me and him became brothers, like yeah. you know, you know, that's my brother. Right. You know, and um just you know, on my on my end he been solid day one. Yeah. I've been saying. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like even right you know, right this day, if I need it for anything, you know. Yeah, no question asked, no nothing. He just solid to me. Yeah, that's what's you know. up. You know, it's funny, I was with Ross one time and this is when him and Jeezy were beefing. Yeah. And we were in Atlanta <laughs> in the middle of a parking lot. I, yeah. to this day I can't really I don't know why we were there. Mm-hmm. But it didn't feel safe. I ain't gonna yeah. lie. I ain't yeah. gonna lie. Yeah, most parking lots today ain't safe. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I ain't gonna <laughs> lie. But he like I ain't gonna tell you exactly what he said. He re- he reassured me. Though that we were good. Oh no, nah, Ross. Yeah. Listen, y'all, he's good. <laughs> he's listen, nah, I've been with Ross lots of times. Right. Yeah, I'm like, okay, so now nah, we good. I talked to him, Dre. I was like, yo, man, um, you think you know we, you nah, know? Nah, nah, nah. He's like, no. Nah, man, Ross type nigga had two niggas sitting across the parking lot <laughs> waiting for you, yeah. waiting for anything to happen. Yeah. The niggas a thinker. That's what I love about him. He's a thinker. That's basically what he told me. Absolutely, yeah. I already know it. Yeah. <laughs> I already know. It. I know him. I know yeah. him too well. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, yeah. no, nah, nah, that's what's up. That's what's yeah. up. Um, in terms, of, talk, talk to me and us. Yeah. You know, specifically Atlanta. You know, yeah. um, is that the home of hip hop? Like, and has it been for a while now? Like, you know, I, and like, look, I'm New York. Like, do we have the title? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But let me ask you, why, why, why aren't we seeing more? And and correct me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong. I know Earth Gang is out there and things of that sort. Yeah. But um, it seems like trap music is really dominant. Is that is that is that fair enough? Absolutely. Is, yeah. Is it, yeah. Because I think really, man, when it comes to that, which I helped create, you mm-hmm. know, you know, big shout out to Ti. Yeah. Because Ti most definitely. Oh, and you know, and was, talk to us about you know, that, because according to Tip, who we gonna talk to very soon, yeah. he said the it's anniversary brother. is is coming up. Yeah. So talk talk about you know both what of I, you know, you know what I know about what, about Tip was like. I mean, like, even when I. I mean, like I first met Tip at noontime, like uh, like he was hanging around noontime. And what I loved about the little nigga when I first did Boys in the Hood, man, he said he gonna ch- he gonna chop me to a verse. I said, I said, nigga, been knowing you for three years. You gonna chop me to a verse? Right, right. He said, business is business. So I knew that he was on his way. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, but he, I mean, but he more definitely took the marketing of it, took it up, but he was solid nigga too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um, um. I think when it comes to trap music, the reason trap music is more dominant than that is because we had the money. Out there. The boy got money in Atlanta, yeah. And and that money would sway shit, and that money would turn you, you know, get you turned. Yeah. So that's what it is. You know, Atlanta is a turnt city. Yeah. So that's why I think the trap music would will always be that way. Yeah. They got money to blow. Yeah. So they, I mean, they go to a strip club and they'll spend ten, fifteen, twenty thousand. Yeah. So that, that's most definitely gonna get you popular. You be consistent with it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. In fact, we did an article on all hip hop with you, you, yeah. Jeezy, Gucci, yep. Ti. Yeah. What puts you in the same? You know, you're not a you're not a rapper. You know what I mean? So what puts you in the same on that Mount Rushmore? I think I spearheaded. I think I, you know, I mean, I, I mean, you know, thinking I did. I I came out first with with, with one of the first groups that represented the trap. Yeah, that boys in the hood. Yeah, yeah. And who put a lot of money on branding that shit? Yeah. So. Yeah. You ever think about bringing boys in the hood back? Nah. 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 It, it, it's kind nah. of people gonna always. Jesus was so, so intact with that shit. Yeah. I mean, he was so important yeah. to it. And I mean, I, I mean, you gotta think like after Jesus, I put Wayne in it. No, a lot of people don't know. Yeah, I got I didn't a know whole that. album with, with Lil Wayne with Boys in the Hood. What? Yeah. Know that. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, if if you on the internet, it's, it's a lot of song with Wayne and the Boys Hood on there. Yeah, and there there was song Wayne Ti and Boys Hood because I used the song when Ti was part of it a little bit. Yeah, but Tip, he wasn't never in Boys Hood. He was always my little partner, and I and and I was there for me. Yeah. So if I needed some songs, he there. Yeah, and um, and I wanted to put Game in it. Like I, I mean, like mm-hmm. I did a remix with Game. Yeah. one time I was like, it's too West Coast for that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, man. Uh, Game is dope, though. Oh, dope, man! One of my favorite West Coast rappers. Absolutely. Yeah, but yeah. but I was trying to brand A. Yeah. So I didn't, yeah. you know. So I put Gorilla Zone in it to fit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, like like Yo Gotti. You know, I had about about a half album with him. 
Right. And you know what I'm saying? Cause I would put Yo Gotti right behind Jeezy, but I'm like, oh, they sound a little bit too much alike. Right. You know, with the substance matter, so I'm like, nah, let me branch out. So I put Zoe in it, because I like the Zoe person. Yeah. And if I don't like it, I, I too much can't do business with you. you I, ain't never, I ain't no one of them niggas fake it, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a lot of kids are going to jail now. They, you know, they're getting killed. Yep. What are, your, what are your thoughts on that? How can we fix that? Like, how, what, what do we got to do? Man, start at home, man. I mean, you know, college is telling me all the time. Yeah. Man, start at home. Yeah. And if we don't do the shit at home, we, we never get home. what nobody say. Yeah. Let's start at home. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I, I mean, I, like I be going, I mean, like, I be seeing people like, now, now, now I don't know how y'all was raised, raised in New York, but I was raised with respect. Yes, sir, yes, ma'am, my elders. Yeah. And I see people now don't even, don't even work, don't even do that. Kids talk back to them and all. I said, you don't do that shit, you know that nigga? I mean, start at home, dog. Yeah, no, I feel you. I feel you. you know? So for anybody that wants to do what you do or yeah. be uh, a, a business person, yeah. what would you advise them to do? Like, if you a street nigga, number one, man, I say this over and over. Whatever you got going on in the streets, leave that shit at the door. Mm. Now, reprogram your keep it 100, reprogram that. I'm a killer. Turn all that shit like Kobe say. Turn all that shit right there into a different mind state. That's one thing. Um, study, man. Study the game. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of artists, I mean, a lot of executives don't study the game enough. Right. You know, and that and, and that's one thing about Pac. I know he studied everything. Right. And um, well, number one, put God first. Okay. You know, so you gotta have faith in it because it's gonna come a time where boy, your money gonna run out, your friends gonna run out, your mm -hmm. team gonna run out, and boy, you got nothing but yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And then she laugh and I leave, man, believe in yourself. Cause ain't nobody gonna believe in your boy if you don't believe in yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Give me one more since we got we got four. Five. Let's just round it up to five. Um if you can. Family. Okay. I mean, you know, they're gonna need your family. Like I lost my first family. Mm. So I mean just out here grinding, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you almost definitely be away from them. So try to figure out how to kind of how to how to keep it fun. Yeah. Keep it fun and family. That's what I say. Fun and family. Okay. Try to keep the game fun and try to keep your family part of it. Yeah. All right. Big Block. My block name. Entertainment. Man, appreciate, appreciate you, man. You, man. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Yeah. All right. Grouchy Greg. What's up, baby? Shout out to Grouchy Greg.